1045 the team 1045 the team.com on the phone right now you know her from sports center you know her from little league world series coverage you know her from tennis coverage she's everywhere on the network it is chris mckendry we appreciate her being here with us and chris we have to start i was all pumped up when we set up this interview to talk french open now we have to talk to darker side what is up with maria sharapova and do you think we'll see her on tour again well quite possibly we'll see her on tour again the question is when right now she's facing a two-year ban uh you know backdated to to um her infractions but if if that's the case and she does not win her appeal it'll be a solid two years but meantime she's going ahead and she's trying to appeal to the court of arbitration for sport uh appeals usually take three months she is trying to expedite her appeal and have it heard within a month do you buy her story? Um, you know, because obviously this this drug that she took, she says it wasn't illegal. Then on January first, she didn't get the memo that it was now illegal. Does that seem plausible to you? Well, she did get the memo. She didn't read the memo. There's a difference. Um, and you're right. Right now, she's saying, you know, her her line of defense is that the ITF should have made it clearer to her that um, you know what she was taking was now on its banned list. Um, it was on a watch list and then it went to a banned list as of January of this year. It's something she has been taking, she says, for various uh, you know, health-related issues for the past 10 years. Um, it, I find it interesting that she, uh, she takes it um, on a match days. You know, so all her health-related issues seem to flare up on match days. Um, you know, there's a lot of suspicious-looking things going on here. Um, she said she didn't read the email. Uh, that, that put it on the watch list and that the ITF didn't come out and, and make it very obvious that something she has been tested for um, was now on its list. That is what she is saying. Um, she is saying she didn't intentionally, and that is what, you know, what they found, that she did not intentionally um, take this to be a performance enhancer. They couldn't find where there was solid intention for her to do it. That doesn't mean she's not without fault that she is definitely, well, maybe not intentional, it was negligent on her part, and that's why they hit her not with four years, but with two. If she intentionally did it, she would have been out for four years. 104.5 The Team, 104.5 The Team.com. On the phone, Chris McKendry, ESPN, all over the tennis coverage. You're there in person. You get to witness Novak Djokovic's greatness. He's now got all four Grand Slams in his possession at one time. He wins the French Open finally uh, the other day at Roland Garros. How just kind of breathtaking is it to see him play live? It's remarkable. It's remarkable. I mean, honestly, to see all of the top players play live. Um, the first time I ever saw Rafa Nadal play live, what just strikes you is the physicality with which, you know, these players um, play the game. It's just unbelievable for Djokovic and for players like Murray. And, I mean, to watch Roger play, it's just um, it, the grace that, that Roger plays with. For Djokovic, his speed, his flexibility, um, it's, it's something, it's a marvel. It, it truly is amazing to watch um, the athleticism they play with. It's amazing. Serena Williams gets to the French Open final, doesn't win it, but still great in my mind. Does she going to have enough, you think, to, to break the all-time Graham Slams record? Because it looks like she's still kicking so. very strong to me. I think so. I think she'll get there. I think uh, 18 was very hard for her, and 22 is proving to be difficult for her. Um, and, I, and I don't think it's a coincidence. You know, they're very personal numbers. At 18, there was Chrissy and Martina. And at 22 sits Steffi. So I think I think it's a it's a bigger hurdle for her seemingly when when a number is attached to another great name and another legend. But uh, there's no reason to believe that she's not going to get there. 104.5 The Team and 104.5 The Team dot com on the phone. Chris McKendry of ESPN covers everything tennis. She's at all the Grand Slams. Chris, this is an unusual year because it is also an Olympic year. With all the, the health concerns uh, about Rio, do you see some of the top players dropping out of the Olympics due to health concerns, or would it be more to just they want to recover after Wimbledon and before the U.S. Open? Um, I don't know if it's health concerns. I don't know. Um, you know, it could be, you know, if, if players drop out and decide not to. Um, I certainly hope Djokovic doesn't. I mean, we're looking at a potential Golden Slam, right? It's not just the, the calendar slam, Um but he could have a golden slam, which is crazy to think about. Uh, it could be, you know, it, it, the tour never stops. I mean, they have really zero off season, um, and they and they continue to play all year round. And we have seen, especially the top name in the ladies' game, um, 
miss quite a, quite a bit of time, you know, maybe if not the slams, the big tournaments leading up to the slams with injury. So that is definitely a, a concern. Um, but no, I, I, I hope everybody plays and, and, you know, represents their country and, and I hope it's a great tournament in Rio. I was making a comparison the other day. Pe- people were talking about the NBA Finals, and they said that if LeBron can't beat the Warriors, you know, then he's not that great. And my argument was, well, he's just running up against greatness. And it made me think of tennis first, actually, and guys like Andy Roddick and Andy Murray. What would their legacies be if they weren't in the time of a Federer, Djokovic, Nadal? Oh, gosh. Who could, who could say? I mean, Roddick would be a multiple Wimbledon champion, I believe, if if he wasn't born during the era of Federer's, you know, <laughs> if he wasn't playing during the era of uh, Federer's greatness, um, Andy Roddick would be a Wimbledon champion, uh, you know, once if not twice or more. Um, and, and same for Andy Murray. You know, he's, he's won, um, you know, Wimbledon. I mean, and, and he's, he's won um, Olympic medals, and he's won a U.S. Open. He's a great, great player. He also has lost five Australian Open finals. <laughs> his record in finals is in in grand slams is is kind of stunning um and it's because of who he's playing i mean he's playing Djokovic, who you know if he continues on this clip he's in the conversation right now and he very well may be the greatest player to ever play the game i mean you right now have rod laver saying he thinks Djokovic is the goat you know if he continues at this clip so it's tough to say. I mean, but I guess we have that in every sport, don't we? I mean, what would so many players' records be if not for playing, you know, let alone playing in a golden era, which is what, you know, all the runner-ups are doing right now. I, every year I see you at the Australian Open, it always comes to mind, and I never think to ask anyone who might potentially know. So I'm asking you, what is the environment like on Australia Day? Because that seems like the world's best party <laughs> that I want to be at. It is. You know, I say every tournament, every Grand Slam has its own personality, and it's so true. Um, but Australia is a party. It is a party of a tournament. <laughs> it is just so much fun. It's um, a great, great event, and Australia Day is, is a little wild. It, it is. Actually, I was walking to um, the, the arena, you know, to, to the park, Melbourne Park. We can walk from our hotel. It's, it's the best work assignment ever. <laughs> and, uh, and it's beautiful. You walk through a park. You, you, it's just great. I can't even put it into words. I, everybody should put it on their bucket list. But as we're walking over, it's 10 o'clock in the morning, and the police were already out doing uh, breathalyzer, like stop and test people um, who were driving their cars and and I was saying to the to our Aussie friends on the crew, I said, "Why would people be already drinking that much at 10 a.m.?" Like I was, I was, I must have sounded so naive. And they said, "No, Chris, they're still they're still getting people from the night before." I'm oh. like, Australia Day starts today, right? <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. It's not to say that everybody's just out drinking, but it is quite quite the party, and and it's a lot of fun. But the Aussies are great. It's one of my favorite places. I say, if I didn't live here, I could easily live in Melbourne. They love sport. Um, they love competition, and and they just embrace it all. It's excellent. Well, I'm going to have to get to Australia then uh, in in January. So, uh, you know, the thing that always amazes me about tennis, every year I watch every Grand Slam and I always think to myself, I cannot imagine Tiger Woods, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant having to give a speech after losing a major, you know, a major championship. What is the the environment like when you're at a Grand Slam and you have to watch the loser take the stage next to the winner and make a speech and pose for the photos? What is that like? Yeah, that's a great observation because it is so true. It's, it's, I can't think of another sport where the losers stay on court or on the field while the winners, you know, receive all the accolades and while the loser has to gather his thoughts. Um, you know, you think of Djokovic last year at the French Open when he lost to Varvinka. Um, it endeared him to the crowd. Um, I think of the, the incredibly long match um, between Djokovic and Nadal uh, going back a handful of Australia Opens. I mean, it was, you know, close to six hours. Um, and, and, you know, both players were hanging on the net, dehydrated, ready to collapse, and, and yet they had to, you know, gather your thoughts. I mean, it, watching it, one word comes to mind, and it's great respect. I mean, it's, it's respect to stand there and, and in your worst moment, um, you know, think of Roddick when he lost to Federer in that, in that epic Wimbledon final. You know, it's just great respect for um, for champions. 
Chris McKendry, ESPN Tennis, but also with the Little League World Series. Chris, we'll get you out of here on this. You mentioned Australia Day and the Australian Open being a big party. What is your experience like in Williamsport at the Little League World Series? Because I actually went there for the first time two years ago, and I thought it was amazing. It is amazing, isn't it? It's, um, and I'm actually not doing the Little League World Series coming up oh. this summer, but everybody continue to support. Um, no, I'm, I'm sticking exclusively with tennis throughout the summer um, at ESPN, but it is an amazing atmosphere. It's, um, you, you know, the first time I went there, I came back and I said to the bosses, we keep covering that tournament like it's just baseball games. You're missing the point. It's Americana, it's family, it's childhood, it's reliving your own memories and, and watching kids experience, you know, what you loved uh, growing up. It's, it's amazing. Everything's a throwback from the food to the kettle corn pop, right, to the hot dogs, to the prices, um, to it being free, to just having summertime fun. It's an incredible experience. Um, and that's something else. Everybody put that on your bucket list, too. But I'm glad you got out there and, um, and, and enjoyed it. It's it's really fun. It was a blast. I was year. I was there the year that the uh, the kids from Connecticut made that deep run. Um, oh, that's my hometown. Oh. I mean, not my. You know, that's that's where I live. Yeah, so that was that was a big moment here in uh, in Connecticut, and it was it was interesting to watch. Uh, you know, I always see what the teams do when they're there. It was very interesting to see the effect um, the kids had on all the kids in, in a whole town and the adults too. It was it was amazing. It was so fun. It was a blast for me as well. My my favorite memory at all was taking a picture with Doug out the mascot. So, <laughs> well then you've done it. You've lived. You've lived. <laughs> Chris McKendry, ESPN. Again, you know her from Sports Center. You now previously know her from Little League World Series coverage, and she's all over tennis. So, Chris, thanks a lot for your time. Yes. We look forward to Wimbledon and the U.S. Open. Starts two and a half weeks. Please join us. <laughs> Absolutely, Chris. Thank you very much. Thanks, pretty. Bye.